just a bit of fun to show you what I use and maybe give you some ideas on things to try. Hey, this episode of Some Gadget Guy is brought to you by viewers like you. All the amazing folks who share content on social media help us out with those algorithms and the incredible generosity of my patrons at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. More info on those awesome geeks later in the video. And this is going to be a rapid fire video. Just listing out the stuff I have installed on my Windows on ARM devices. Obviously, we're still excited about the Snapdragon X Elite powered PC. But this is a list of programs and applications that I've been building for a while, especially using them on my older Windows on ARM laptops and tablets. While a bunch of techies still keep criticizing things like software support, it really hasn't affected me and my use is what I would consider above average for my work and play. All right, jumping right in, I run a trio of browsers. Obviously, Edge is pre-installed in Windows, and it's a fine browser, but I also have Chrome and Firefox. Chrome is something of a legacy and support app for my use. There are just a small handful of web services that run better on Chrome, but the vast majority of my browsing is done these days on Firefox. All three browsers are gonna get your jobs done, and there are a number of other browsers that you can check out too. But most recently, it's just been really exciting to see how well these browsers are scoring in benchmarks. Now, the entertainment side is handy as I still mostly use browsers instead of individual media and entertainment apps. I know there can be some use cases where you'll want a separate program handling movie or music playback, but things like the Netflix PC app, which recently removed our ability to store films for offline viewing, then... What's the point of the app? I'm still subscribed to Kobuz, handling most of my streaming music, and Plex handles our home movie collection, and every other media streaming service these days, I'm, I'm watching through a browser. I'm not running a Plex server on this laptop, but I stream from my server through Firefox. I don't believe there's been progress in delivering an ARM native version of the Plex server, but if you wanna run a media server from an ARM PC, there is a build of Jellyfin that you can try. I'll be playing with that soon, and I wanna see how it handles my network storage too. For just playing media on my system, I don't love the different ARM flavor of VLC, and I like emulating the x86 version of VLC better, which has been running fine even with some of my larger 4K Blu-ray rips. The ARM version seems more like the mobile app, which is fine on a phone, but I don't like it as much on a laptop. Right now, I'm playing with Screenbox, and it's a pretty alternative to VLC. I'll have to report back on that if it replaces VLC for me. Now, media editing apps are running really well. Handbrake is a go-to service for me. I use it a lot. Performance is very good, and there are options that use the ARM hardware media encoders. If you need to compress a video, convert a video to a more common file type, or add subtitles to an MKV, it's really handy. And this has come up a few times recently as I have some old DVD rips that have great video quality, but at the time I made them, I did not save the subtitle track. So now I can drop that movie into DaVinci Resolve. I can use Resolve's subtitle creation tool, create an SRT file, then stitch that file into a new container through Handbrake, but really, DaVinci Resolve 19 is out of beta. The official release is here and it's an incredible video editing platform. I still hope to see a bit more polish on some of the plugins and effects, but we're in really good shape for editing and rendering on the go. A free version can get you started, and the paid version is so much cheaper than subscribing to Adobe Apps, Adobe who is still dragging their heels on ARM support. I paid once for Resolve almost four years ago, and I haven't had to spend another dime on updates. Even more embarrassing for Adobe, the team at Shotcut recently upped their ARM version of their terrific free editor too. Now, rendering speeds on Shotcut are a little slower than Resolve when we're tackling similar projects, but it's a fluid and powerful video editor. It's awesome to see a smaller developer team put out a great app, and it's tough to beat free especially if you need more robust editing tools. Of course, Microsoft includes something like ClipChamp, but I think it's really frustrating how basic features like 4K video support are paywalled. That has nothing to do with cloud services. Your computer's hardware handles 4K video encoding and decoding, and you can get 4K rendering for free without any limits or watermarking from Shotcut 
and Resolve. I'm a little less familiar with it, but CapCut runs pretty well too. And there are fun tools in CapCut, but I personally don't love their data handling policies. And I think some of the layout and side banners can be a little annoying. But if Cap cuts your speed, it's gonna run well here too. But as a quick tangent, and just to take it back to Shotcut for just a second, one of the reasons I'm so excited about them including ARM native support in Windows, DaVinci Resolve is the more polished program, but it's currently only supporting the newest X Elite systems. Shotcut is going all the way back to the older Qualcomm 8CX chips, like here on my Robo and Kala. If you're running an older Windows and ARM system and you haven't given up and just gone over to the Windows subsystem for Linux to fill in that gap, you definitely need to check out Shotcut. Rendering speeds are slow, but the performance in the app as you're cutting up your timeline is nice and smooth. Okay, and uh, for audio editing, I'm only tackling basic tasks in standalone audio editors these days. Most of what I do, I can now do in a video editing timeline like Resolve. But sometimes it's nice to work on a piece of audio and Audacity has been working fine for that. There is not an ARM native version public yet. There are some unofficial versions, some, some beta versions, but emulating the x86 version I haven't noticed any serious performance issues. We're handling audio pretty well. Now, I've recorded the audio for three videos now using wireless and wired mics directly on my Surface through Audacity, and that worked great. Absolutely a solid option for folks cutting a podcast and even doing a little bit more advanced layering work. It'll only get better for heavier editing when native code finally arrives. Ditto our streaming options. OBS is also running well as an emulated program and managing a 1080p stream with a few different sources and overlays totally doable. If you're running a more intense stream or presentation with a ton of sources and elements, we'll we'll probably see improvements when OBS delivers ARM native builds. OBS has been running fine here. Now onto image editing and our options here are excellent. GIMP has been well ahead of the curve for multi-layer image editing, supporting ARM PCs well, they were well ahead of the release of the Snapdragon X Elite. It's still ugly, it can be a little obtuse, but it's plenty capable for a wide variety of tasks. Paint.net is a handy solution for a couple quick touch-up edits to a photo. I've been using that for a couple years now. And for more in-depth photography processing or editing raw files, I'm a big fan of Affinity, another app that delivered ARM support before the X Elite laptop started shipping. It's almost like Affinity is a real market leader and led the way on improved support instead of dragging their heels on ARM because that's what leaders do and you should support companies that take the initiative and lead the way. GIMP and Paint.net are also free programs and right now Affinity offers a long test drive for their photo and illustrator programs. You can try them out for six months before you have to commit. For a fast and streamlined batch processing tool, XN Convert has been one of my favorites to just drag a folder of photos in and shoot out a bunch of compressed images that I can load up to my website. There is not an ARM native version, but the x86 and the portable versions work really well even though they're emulated. Now this next one, I'm really not that familiar with, but Blender. I'm running an unofficial port to try it out, see if I can learn more about it on an ARM PC. I can't comment knowledgeably how it performs against x86 systems, but it's running really well here as I learn how it works. At least running decently enough for me to as a total novice, kind of get my sea legs on what it can do. Unfortunately, Zoom and Team and Slack have been working well enough. So instead of being productive during my day, I can just have a constant set of interruptions from messaging apps. Beyond those three, like my media and entertainment options, I'm filling in any other gaps just by using a web browser and most other web and collaborative solutions. And while more file compression options are just built into the native Windows File Explorer, 7-Zip is running like a champ on ARM. For the longest time, I was using RAR in my benchmarking videos because RAR compares Android and Windows performance really well. But RAR does not have a native ARM version and emulating RAR in, on an x system is painfully slow. 7-Zip crushes now that the ARM build is available. That was another one of those like techie urban myth deal breakers for a lot of people. Like there are no VPNs that work on ARM systems, which taking that comment at face value that there were none, 
Well, that just wasn't true. Now the VPN landscape is improving. I've been using WireGuard, that's supported ARM for a while now. Surfshark just recently updated their app, which is what I used on my most recent trips. This video is not sponsored by Surfshark. I have no promo code to let you click on. Private Internet Access now has an ARM native solution, and Nord is committing to supporting ARM soon too, but I gave up waiting for Nord and was happy to use WireGuard on my older Windows tablet and Surfshark now. I'm probably not gonna go back and give Nord money again, but I know a lot of people will be happy when they finally get around to supporting ARM PCs. I needed something sooner than they could deliver it, and I was happy to give another company money for it. Now, obviously, Microsoft 365 is included, and we pay for a family account for OneDrive and full Office support, but if you'd like to go the free route, LibreOffice also has an ARM version available. Now, this is funny, my daughter's school laptop runs Ubuntu. I'm really stoked about that. And their installed Office Suite is LibreOffice. So I've been playing with that again so that I would know how to show her how to use it. And power tools, ARM compatible. It's one of the first videos I made on my Surface was how to remap the Copilot key. There's a ton of other fun things to dig into there. And if you'd like a follow-up video on the things that I like to do, drop a comment and we'll see if we can put together another tutorial. Supporting multiple family computers and reviewing mini PCs, I'm using Rufus a lot now to make Windows boot drives. ARM native, and it works great. This is a key technical support tool for me because I don't always love the manufacturer value-added software on a lot of our systems, and I can wipe that out really quickly. This one I even debated putting on the list because I'm using FTP a lot less these days between improved file explorers and web apps for our network storage, but FileZilla comes in clutch for advanced file management, especially when you manage your own website or you have just a big box of hard drives connected to your router. And I'm still really happy that Windows has terrific support for Linux emulation inside Windows. WSL runs great. I have Ubuntu installed. It's another opportunity to find options. If something runs poorly when emulating x86 software, if you can find a Linux solution for your issue, it'll probably run better in WSL than trying to emulate x86. Again, my daughter's school laptop running Ubuntu, and I can directly look at and show her aspects of Ubuntu on my Windows machine. It is so much fun teaching an eight-year-old about sudo. Now, my gaming requirements aren't extreme, and this is one of the major differences between the current X Elite systems and the older uh, Snapdragon 8 CX machines. Now, Steam and Epic Game Launchers run fine on both generations of Windows on ARM. You can install and update games as you would expect them to on any other computer. But that older 8 CX system, it's really underpowered, and I'm really not trying to tax my laptop with the most graphics-intense AAA titles, that's genuinely not the kind of gameplay I like to jump into from my downtime these days. Right now, if I'm cruising on Vampire Survivors, going flow state on Tetris Effect, dying a whole bunch on Dead Cells, current and older ARM PCs handle all of those kinds of games better than on my Steam Deck. I mean, like, the newest install for me right now is getting started on the Hades 2 public beta. It's so good. I love Hades 2 so much, and it runs really well here. Which is where we should wrap this video up. My work is in media and entertainment. I cut YouTube videos and work on production projects. Windows on ARM has not slowed me down. And I haven't encountered a roadblock that I couldn't get around. Now, obviously that means I've had to change a little bit of my behavior and sometimes I have to find some alternative programs to the things I was using before, but I don't think that's a deal breaker. If you've heard people say that the software support is so terrible that you just can't do anything and maybe you should wait until Windows on ARM matures, I'd really start to question how savvy that techie might be. I have not found it tremendously difficult to find some alternatives to the few roadblocks that I've encountered. And we're talking about going back a couple years of using Windows on ARM. The most obvious stumble at the time I shot this is, of course, the terrible support from Adobe. And I wish more folks would push back on Adobe being considered some kind of de facto standard. It seems kind of lame 
how expensive their subscriptions are, how punitive and potentially illegal their cancellation terms are, and they are not living up to their commitment to support and improve their products. Every time you see a hack headline from a tech blog like, Windows ARM PCs don't support this necessary app. That's a crappy hack headline meant to confirm the bias of a reader who likely has already invested in an Intel or AMD machine. The problem there is not with ARM PCs, the problem is now on the software developers that are not updating their apps and delivering ARM compatible code. But cranky rant notwithstanding, this is what I've been using on my Surface Laptop 7 and on my older uh, 8CX systems like my Robo and Kala. And these systems have been rocking my socks. A brilliant blend of performance and great battery life. So hopefully this gives you a few ideas on how to use your ARM PC when you decide to try one out. And for folks already using some kind of ARM system, have you found any killer apps for your ARM PC? Something that really gets you excited about making the switch. Please drop some comments down below, share some of that knowledge and help some other people out because the commentary here is still, I feel a little reductive. I love testing these systems out from mini PCs, Intel systems, AMD systems, Nook clones to newer, arm powered PCs. And the folks who get to see the results of my testing first are my amazing patrons over on patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Now I appreciate everybody who's out there supporting their favorite YouTube channels, especially if you're sharing across social media that really helps us out with these terrible algorithms. But if you have the means, I'd hope you'd consider joining the community again at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Community events, there's the private discord, there's an early access tier, all of my videos in 4K, and they're just a really awesome group of geeks to hang out with. A huge thank you from the bottom of my heart because those are the folks that are literally helping to keep the lights on here in the gadget. Gadget Lab. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy basically everywhere, but these days I'm spending a bit more time on the Mastodons, a lot less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and definitely not on that dumpster fire that Twitter has become. And I will catch you all on the next video.